Okay, so uh, thanks, Fabio. I'll just start. Uh, let, uh, I just um, somebody complained in the previous uh, meetings uh, that um, this guy 307 was having uh, was showing some symptoms suggesting uh, hesitation has start. So so I've pointed out um, some things that could cause it, uh, excluding, um, you know, diagnosing via the scan tool. That sometimes you could also have to do manual or mechanical diagnosis to know if uh, the issue, the cause or the culprit is mechanical, not uh, electrical. So I pointed out uh, the brake binding um, issue that can cause such symptom. I also pointed out uh, fuel pressure which of course you will not find on um, scan two when you scan you will find you, if you scan your engine ecu it doesn't matter which scan tool you use especially for that particular uh podium model which is 307 it will not tell you that your fuel pump or fuel pressure is low yeah it could indicate some symptoms uh, some fall but it will won't point at uh fuel pressure your fuel pump or your fuel filter or whatever so you now have to mechanically, uh, manually uh, check your fuel pressure to know how good it is so that you can rule it out as a cause of uh, some symptoms like heart start, uh, hesitation, uh, loss of power, and the rest. So, um, so I pointed out those two, uh, two things to check. Now, for the third one, the third thing, uh, I don't know, if he hasn't joined because um, it would have made sense uh, the questions of the asking for him to clarify. So if your timing is off, it can be very hard to tell the condition of the timing on a TU5 JT4 in TU7 because it doesn't have a camshaft uh, Position sensor. So um, most times when your timing is off, you won't see it on your scan too. And the symptom he mentioned can also cause, uh, the timing can cause those symptoms he mentioned. So a uh, question that I wanted to ask him was, uh, before he started to experience or observe these symptoms, uh, was there any work that was done that they needed to remove the timing belt? Or he need he change the timing bed and then you know he now started to notice this thing. So it's because it's possible that the timing is off. And I mean off, I'm not me completely off, but it's possible that it's not properly set. So yes, in that case, you see, it's just like what I was saying earlier in the uh, previous video. As long as you need to press your throttle a little bit hard to be able to maintain. Uh, or keep the momentum of the car without dropping the vehicle speed dropping, or uh, yeah, this guy dropping. I saw you have to push your throttle a little bit that you are burning your fuel because at lower RPM the engine torque is supposed to handle the weight of your car. So if they if at some point for whatever reason you can you could no longer handle that, so in that case you will now need HP to be able to to pull the vehicle. Yeah, you are going to bump for you know that's the advantage turbo engines or supercharged basically um turbo and um, supercharged engines car force induction engines they, they tend to consume less fuel at lower rpm because they can be able to the torque they produce at lower rpm is much higher than the naturally aspirated engine. So you don't really need the HP to drive the, your car normally in the street. Your torque is enough. All you need is just press the torque a little bit and the torque will handle it. Within, between 1,000 to 1,600 uh, RPM, if the car produces maximum torque of that car is 300 HP, at that such low RPM, we get about 280. So they can see how good it is. So the HP is only when you want to bump well. They start pushing your RPM, your you know, beyond 2,000, 3,000. Yeah, it becomes faster, but then yeah, most times you start burning for like the non to the charging. In fact, the 5.8, if you push it beyond 3,000 RPM, 
first place and tie the conversation. It's almost like a VC zone. You know, so um so I don't know the timing, how his timing is. If you need to go and look at it. So don't bother with scanner. For TU5 JP4 engine in 307. Don't if if you are if you are suspecting your timing, engine timing, forget about scanner. It doesn't matter whether I'm 52,000 because there's a sensor there that will not tell you. If you know that engine is just a basic, yeah. So um uh, the sensor, uh, the camshaft, or what we also regard as uh, IPM sensor, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, reference sensor, uh, spark uh, plug, cylinder one, yeah, cylinder one reference sensor, and then uh, camshaft position sensor. So if it's not there, uh, the sensor will be able to tell you on the scan on the ECU that the the camshaft and the Crankshaft are not synchronizing each, with each other. So, yeah, so you need a physical check. You, you just have to physically check. I know you are no longer in this uh, meeting, but uh, by the time I publish it, you need to watch. So, go and check your timing. Another thing that can cause such uh, loss of power, hesitation, hard start is your exhaust. In other words, the emission system of the, of the vehicle. But sometimes, you know, uh, the, the emission exhaust is kind of different from the emission. Emission is just basically your catalyst. The exhaust is just there for your cylinders, the sound. So you need to go and check, especially TU5JP4. There are catalysts, which is attached on the manifold, the uh, engine manifold, the exhaust manifold. Sometimes they do burn off. And so there's a burning off, they, they, they flow towards the rear and then sometimes block to be on the center, what we call port, exhaust port, center one of the rear one. So you, you need to find out if, did you remove it? For about one, is it still there? That's for you, I tell you, you are, are you sure you, you have catalysts on the car? If you are sure, you need to remove and, and confirm and stay there. Not in the, I'm not trying to say probably as a story, no. It's most likely it has burnt off or number two, it has blocked because all these things you mentioned. Yeah, catalyst will not, uh, blocked catalyst will not cause hashtag, but it will give you that low power symptom. You say when you are grabbing the hair, you see that your car is struggling to move. You have to press the throttle almost to the floor for you to gain some from power or movement. Yeah, catalyst will do that when it's blocked. And be careful, catalyst, a block catalyst can knock your engine, it can wreck that engine. That's happened to a 508 user. Three times he knocked it, <laughs> three times as it, within the space of three months, he damaged two, two engines. Okay, well, two engines that damaged, not the third one. So you need to go, it's most likely it's time to tell you something is wrong. So you need to open, remove that uh, catalyst, Catalytic converter, be sure. Number one, is it still there? Number two, is it blocked? If it was there before and you are sure it was there before, it most likely it has burnt off, disintegrate, and uh, probably has gone and blocked something, the exhaust flow. So if, uh, if there is no longer flowing freely, of course, there will be resistance. Engine will, not, engine will be struggling to, to function when it cannot breathe properly. So, these are the things you need to check. Um, well, you're not here, so I can't really say uh, some of the things you've checked. So um, other than that, so uh, I don't know. When you watch this video, just uh, go to some of the things. Since you say you scan the car, it's not showing anything on the catalytic or uh, your PP2000 as faulty or what could be the cause of all those things electronically. So you have to go mechanical this time. Um, so I don't know if anybody has any question regarding, you know, Toju or anything or comments so that uh, people can be found and in place. Uh, what I can good evening. Yeah, good evening. How is it? Yes, uh, thanks for all the info. Uh, my question, I think, is that issue I spoke to you about sometimes? That dual exhaust um, 
solenoid valve. You need dual mm. exhaust solenoid mm. valve. Oh. I, you know, I when I scanned it, it's still showing me that it, it is open. I think something like error is like saying it's open. Mm. And uh, since I had that issue, it's like, uh, like I told you, my consumption has increased greatly. Like uh, one full tank, I lose, I lose almost 100 kilometers from what I used to but mm. um, I'm thinking, uh, okay, you know, I'm trying to do one of those uh, uh, pipe, one of those air pipes that was on the. I think I called you that day and I, mm. I showed you the uh, video. Yeah. So since I, since I reconnected it, I have not, I should have cleared, then I should give it a few days, then scan and see whether there's a difference. Mm. Uh, do, do you think? Maybe that valve that failed, or what do you think I should do about that? Okay, so that uh, valve, uh, I'll just tell you, uh, I don't think it will have anything to do with your first conversion. That valve is just a customer thing. It's not necessary okay. to control because it only opens that when it's working. It, it opens uh, when the RPM is close to 5,500 or thereabouts. Yes. Uh, so it's not like um uh, it's going to affect your consumption. Yeah, it will be sure because I know uh, most people say they do show that even Zen night when I scan the VC, they will sometimes they will show that that the other doesn't complain or it doesn't show any symptoms to concerning uh high fuel consumption. So uh, I don't think because you know that thing is even vacuum controlled. So it's not like uh, it's electronic. So the only thing I will say is um, that, you know, that vacuum, there is a hose that connects to I'm trying to remember we had that before seven. I know the 607 or the Z9, but I'm trying to remember the 607. This is where it stops from that uh, valve to where it gets to the engine bay. You know, uh, in case maybe there is um, there is a blockage somewhere or caught, maybe uh, it's no longer uh, sucking, you know, from the, but then uh, from what you discussed, like you said, you, you put your hand and two, both holes are bringing out uh, air. Uh, so in that case, so it's possible the issue is from inside the exhaust. Uh, if to if, because it's not supposed to, uh, it's only when you press the throttle very hard that it's supposed to feel on the second one. That okay, um, uh, this just push down, you just push your hand. But so if it's doing that constantly, uh, even at low RPM, then it's for either something has uh, the valve has stayed open permanently, or something is sucking it open permanently from the engine bay. Because I say, because it has to, it's one easy that it controls when it opens and closes through that vacuum line or vacuum hose. So it's possible you have to follow that line. It can be very because it goes into passes on, on, on top of the exhaust, and it, it will be that easy. But you can still do it, you have to drive it, enter a pit, go under, and then you follow it, you'll see it until it enters the engine bay. So that's the way to do it. But the point is for me, uh, if if you're if, if you are doing it, it's just to get that force to stop, stop showing that force, but not necessarily that you control the fuel conversion. Uh, but um, if I were the owner, yeah, I would still want the, the issue to be resolved, you know, uh, since uh, whether it controls it or not, I wouldn't want to be seeing it there. So yes. uh, it, it will cost you more if it, if the eventual the issue is from the, the exhaust, because I know that exhaust costs more than the four cylinder. Uh, the VCC is, is different. So, um, so that's why I'm saying you need to follow that and see where. What I could do, I don't know when next I will have time. I would choose for me to check because I know my own, I saw it somewhere around them. Um, you know, when I converted mine from motor to manual. So I saw where oh. that was passes through around the, uh, that big pot uh, on that. So it passed through it, entered the engine bay. So, but I didn't follow it because uh, mine is not giving me that same issue. So, but then I think that's probably what I'll do next. So know where exactly did it get? I know it entered the engine bay, 
I need to know where exactly. My Z9 own is completely covered. You can't even see it. The 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 under it is like they sealed it off completely. So it's only for seven that I can actually see where it comes out and enters. You know, so I of the full consumption, I don't know. Well, for seven, yeah, I know for a fact the consumption can tend to be high, but then um some things could also cost it, like some of this I mentioned, it could be mechanical, not electrical, you know. Uh, 407 VCs can also these um those cylinder head covers. They, once they start leaking, uh, to expect five per conversion. It's not even only the covers, but it's just that it, it will be easier to tell if the cause, or if uh yeah if that side is causing the conversion because that's what we call cam uh, camshaft blocks. You know the, the cover is on top. Then there's something that looks like a block holding the camshaft to the cylinder head before you now get to the cylinder head. So for those VCs, most times, even the first thing that they do have it. But so for those VCs, most times you people will be focusing on that those covers, the metal and the plastic cover, receiving it over and over because they are seeing oil dripping from there and that. Thinking, not knowing that even that box on that that is only the capsules can also contribute to the oil leak. So well, what I usually advise is once, um, if you want to sell, if you try it the first time with a quite good uh, RTVC gas can maker, that's what they call black gum. You try it the first time and the issue remains. My advice is, you have to remove your timing belt, remove that box, then seal the two, apply that. Uh, okay, let's go, just use Nigerian term, black gum on both, both the cover and that box, and then uh, cover everything. If you don't do it, you are wasting your time. The one on top might be safe, but that block, block, block under. So any of them, if any is leaking, it will increase the conversion because remember, the mass sensor is on the manifold monitoring the, the the vacuum on the engine. So if there is additional air coming in elsewhere, the conversion will shoot off. Next thing is MAP sensor. As a client, I uh, had a um, similar issue before six. This is manual uh, earlier this week. He, he did uh, some returns, so he now bought it for me to clear the fault. So the map sensor fault came up. So he was now explaining to me some symptoms, loss of power, and the rest. So I told him, see, when it comes to uh, this uh, ES9J4S or ES9A, once your consumption starts going high and you've done everything, you are not seeing any other fault, as in very obvious that it's causing it, change your map sensor. Most times when they fail, especially for that engine, when they fail, they don't indicate any fault. So all you need to do is swap in another one and see what will happen. And from experience, you just see uh, a big improvement. In some case, it was even worse. It was showing permanently mass sensor fault. It, swapped, it, it, it went and got a Nigerian used one and put in. Right there, the AC stopped working, the compressor. I mean, you can tell he has no business with the AC compressor. Immediately, it stopped working. Yeah, so the one he they even put, that Nigeria used on the put was so bad that the engine ECU had to cut off the compressor. You know, engine ECU controls compressor as well. So yeah. he, he sends so much bad uh, signal from that map sensor to the point that he cut off the compressor. He took it to some AC technician and they were like, nothing is wrong with your system. Why are you complaining? But the compressor refused to work. So, and uh, he now said, okay, what did he even do that, that led to this? Because they changed the uh, map sensor and right there it started. So he went back and now this time requested for a Tokumbo one. So the next day they put the Tokumbo one right there. That's a watch. I wasn't there. The compressor started working again. So he now called me to give me this feedback. I say, see, even with this compressor issue, you know, saga, the the car yeah. performance has improved. Though he didn't complain of fair consumption when he bought the car to me the first time. 
But he was talking. The reason why I bought it was it did some work, and yet uh, the car was not showing. It's behaving as if your fuel pressure is low. You try to push it hard. After a while, what time you, you see the power dropping? So uh, you came. I didn't see the only thing that came out was map sensor. I said, okay, map sensor. Yes, will affect those things. So you have to deal with it. Since it was only the four that came out, the MTB came out too. But I said map sensor will, can mess up your MTB. So don't touch your MTB first. Go and deal with the map sensor. So immediately he fixed it, we have put, I mean, as soon as he put the Tokumbo on, both the power loss, the engine performance, uh, the AC compressor that was mess, started messing up when he tested the Niger, all of them went away. So, so as I'm saying, V6 mass sensor, don't rely on your scanner when it comes to it. It's okay, it was, it was that bad that it started showing. Unlike other ones I've seen that sometimes, it will show you that your consumption will go up. So that's another thing uh, probably you might have to look at why you are trying to figure out about that valve from the exhaust. Yeah, so that's... Um... Thank you, thank you so much. Okay. okay. I'll look at those things. Mm. All right. Okay, Lion King, can I ask, I want to ask a question. This uh, uh, mouse sensor, is it only V6 engines that have it or any other engine? Let's say for... Vehicles like four six. Well, um, do you know about uh? It, it's not okay. Let me not limit it to project car. I want to give you an example so you understand me well. Let me you know back then, uh, some like Japanese car. So I will tell you airflow meter. I have you been hearing about it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Meter, yeah. So map yes. sensor. It's just uh same thing like a flow meter, only that is a, like a different technology. Okay. Okay. The ma the air flow meter is just measuring the volume of air that passes through the the air filter uh, setup, so that will determine the amount of oil that will go in. Since the volume of air, uh, you need a uh, commensurate oil to be able to mix and bond in the cylinder. So the mass sensor, what it does, not necessarily the volume of air. Just check as the air is coming in, you, you know, you check the vacuum in the system from there. You know, you can, you know on the intake manifold. So from there, you know, you can, you know, okay, you need this uh, uh, quantity of oil or less. So um, I would say, like my part of 5 dc it's not even a flow meter. What you, so what you call, it has this uh, uh, mass, ma, uh, mass, Absolute pressure sensor mass M A double X, but it looks like a flow meter, but not a flow meter, okay. so it has the same. So, when did I change? Was uh, um, the uh, in the 90s, at least uh, okay. I, I, I can't remember of, uh, four or five, but I know from four or six, all those GX they started using mass sensor. So of course they okay. designed this and that. So uh, I would say, okay, at least when it became obvious, uh, where you find it uh, common in Pojo cars is from the uh, the 90s, at least late 90s. So basically for okay. all four seats, they all have map sensor. But it's just like they are not the same. Unfortunately, since we mentioned four seats, let me even uh, emphasize and talk more on it. Most mechanics, they just interchange. Does they see any? They don't care where which engine it is. They just as long as it has that same shape, they slot it in. The V6 mass sensor exactly. look alike, like EW10 mass sensor in 406. However, the the if you if you if you take the V6 on and put on EW10 406, you see your engine will start running more. It will start, it will start, it will start, it will be running off. You try to accelerate, you look as if it's missile, but it's not missile. But once the RPM start going out, it will, it will, you know, it will sound very well, go up well, but immediately it does that. It will just be rough, 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 running. Then it will be stalling. Stalling means sometimes the car will go off on its own, when, even when you are in motion. Likewise, if you take the four thing that one and put on uh, V6, it start doing the same thing. They all look alike, but the part numbers are different. So what's inside are not the same. So most times, you know, see people make that mistake. The reason why they are different is the ECUs require different uh, signal from this map sensor based on what the manufacturer have uh, 
you know, program the car to work with. However, in 407, in 407 with EW10 J4, EW7 J4, the map sensor in 407 is exactly the V60 for that either 2.0 and 1.3 liter engine. Why in 406 is different? The reason why it, 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 you can't, even though it might be, it's not the same engine, but the difference is the ECU in 407 is not the same in 406. So in 407, they now uh, program the ECU to work with the same specification of uh, map sensor of the VC. You know, so, uh, that sensor, you know, people tend to know it's like very small and red, but then it does a lot, you know, because, because these are the things that uh, fine tune the fuel consumption. So you just can't do without it. The fortunate okay, thing, that means... for four or six, the fortunate thing for the for, uh, EW users is if your map sensor fails, you immediately scan it, you'll see it. It's only VCs that will not show you when there is power or until something bad, maybe physically broken. Because this particular one I just mentioned about the 4C VCs guy that had that uh, mouse sensor issue. They removed the intake module for the mouse sensor was there. And, uh, clean oil, uh, and the car was having this fire issue and they now clean the plug, clean the service injector, put it back. Mouse sensor faults came up. So, uh, I, mean, I want to believe that it's most likely in the process of removing the intake manifold, the sensor hits somewhere because it's directly behind the manifold. So it hits somewhere and now damage something inside. Because I checked the connector, the wires, nothing was wrong. You know, so that's why it's, oh, maybe there was a physical damage, so it just stayed permanent. But for us, it's, it, we will have that physical damage, it will show immediately that EW engine. Likewise, 2.2, they also use the same sensors. 2.2, uh, use the same map sensor with it, uh, 2.0. Uh, no. Okay, because um, I notice sometimes I notice that misfiring. Like when I drive for a while, a long time, when I, because my own is manual, when I match the clutch, the RPM, it goes up. Sometimes I will have to kind of accelerate to see if it will drop down. Sometimes it will do, sometimes it will not. Um, well, it's most likely, uh, in my, it may or may not be not sense, but what you just described is a, a total body issue. For forces, right? Yes, so it's, it's, does it misfire? You know what I mean by misfire? Yeah. Like, no. to, you know, when you start the car, right? As if one plug is not working. No, 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 no. no. Okay, so yeah, what you mean is the RPM uh, will just be yes. jumping up on its own. Uh, yes, on its own. On its own, okay. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a symptom of throttle body. You know, I, you know, I know people tend to like for this... Uh, with uh, EW10J4, EW7J4. Um, Your mind is EW10J4. J4. Uh, yes. I know people tend to, uh, because, uh, you know, they tell you, for example, the reason why people hate EW12J4 and 4 is because of the motorized shuttle body. But the thing is, when you start using MTB, that's uh, like in 406, 407, all of them are MTB. So when you start using that, you see some advantages uh, the MTB has over uh, manual or mechanical throttle body. The one of the annoyance of mechanical throttle body you experience in 406 is the idea of uh, engine speed, which is the RPM. So you just sometimes you just be going up and down. Sometimes if you put out AC, the car will go up, you know. So unlike the MTB, we don't give you all those issues because it's electronically controlled. So it's most likely um, your sleeper motor. See, I want to about that sleeper motor. Is most people don't really know how to service it. You know, they bring it out. Do you know what sleeper motor? No. Uh, if I eat a bit of user in 406, uh, that's one of the first things you learn because it will deal with you at some point. 
maybe I've not maybe I've not experienced that. I've been yeah, using the car for it's likely like, what you're experiencing. Maybe you don't even know that that's what it is. So what they usually do is it um it controls the uh it controls or it channel air. How do I put it? It channels air from the air filter bus to go into the engine, into the manifold when you are the car, the the butterfly. That when you talk about it, the butterfly is at rest. It's not open. So for the engine to keep running, air still need to go enter. But it is not pass through the throttle body butterfly. The butterfly, I mean, if you remove that your air filter tube hose that is connected, you know what's throttle body? You want the car injector mouth. Yes, yes, yes. So when you when you press the throttle, your throttle yes. cable or your pedal, you see that yes. there's something inside that will open. If you release your throttle, it will close. Okay. So that will call you butterfly, yeah. throttle body butterfly. It will also call okay. you back. Yeah. Uh, so that what controls air uh, that comes in and goes out. So when it's all down, it means it has cut off air supply into the manifold or into the engine. So the steeper motor is just there to help air uh, to see to bypass that butterfly into the manifold. Otherwise, it's just like human being. If you close, if you use your two hand and uh, uh, block your mouth and your nose, you won't breathe, right? So it just yeah, needs to breathe and air needs to come in. So they put that super motor to bypass so that air can see passing and keep the engine running, at least at idle. But once you accelerate, it's no longer at idle, so air will start coming in. So that super motor, mm -hmm. because over time, it, it's supposed to come out, go in. So as it's doing that, over time, there's a place, part of the throttle body that is touching when it's closing and uh, this thing. So it will dry up and now stay stuck. It, 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 you know, it's supposed to be oily there so that it can easily go in and out. So when it now dries up, it, it will stay stuck. Let's assume the steeper motor is still good. So it no longer allow air to pass even when you are not accelerating. So you see mm -hmm. doing that thing, going off and on until it goes off sometimes. So instead of most people, what they do, instead of when they remove that uh, steeper motor, they, they remove those um, motion dust, carbon, that is uh, mm. stopping it from moving. But instead mm -hmm. of them to lubricate that place so that it will be free, they will just put it like that, which will even make okay. the, the moisture to even, you know, to rapidly increase and, you know, probably in a week or two weeks later, the same issue will come back. But when you put oil there, you see it, it will take time, you know, yeah, those will be coming, but it will still be allowing it to move in and out Freely until you get mm -hmm. to a point here, yeah, you still have to service it again. Okay. So um, that's the problem with uh, uh, that okay. manual total body. So personally, I will start from there. But one thing you should also understand for EW engine forces, when the ECU is about to fail, when it has a fault, it can do the same thing. Okay. The only thing is when you scan it, it will tell you uh, control unit, injection control unit fault. So you know if your issue is about to pack up, it's just a question of time. But that one can be so bad that um if you if you are sometimes you are in motion or this you just see your happy will shoot up, woo, then sometimes it will just drop. That's, exactly. That's what it does to you. You may need to start walking towards the person you know. <laughs> the day to do it. <laughs> You know, so uh, if, if it, it's like you tamper the EC or somebody has tampered it or something has happened to it and it's not reacting this way, that's how they usually pray. I want to just pack up. But then when you start with PP2000, you see it. It will tell you intermittent okay. fault, uh, control unit, this and that. So it means there's an internal fault in the EC. So uh, okay. it, it can be. So these two things, the throttle body, and um, when I mean throttle body, it could be only the uh, super motor. But the reason why I always say throttle bodies, the cost of buying that super motor, let's assume Tokumbo own, can also buy you the, the complete uh, throttle body with that super motor. So uh, you can also just buy the throttle body. You can get uh, the super motor, new one, uh, I'm not sure it's available in Nigeria. Even the, some people discourage people from it. They say the experience 
when they purchase new super motor was not encouraged. Uh, so there, there was an um, failed use one set, according to them. Otherwise, they are available on AliExpress, very cheap. But I've not, you know, I've not used any car with that uh, device or component, so I can't say. All I know is if EW10, EW7 users in force, if they do go to that uh, issue, you know. So you may have to. The point is, I think you need to scan that car. There's no point beating about it. So you know exactly what the issue is. If it's not your injection, mm -hmm. if you are not, if you scan and it doesn't show you ECU, then you focus on the throttle But If you see ECU, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So, um, but Lion King, there's another issue I wanted to find out. You know, uh, Peugeot 406, the Nigerian assembly. Mm -hmm. There's this thing, sometimes when you want to start the car, when you put the key, it shows a key sign uh, yeah. with a beep uh, in the, uh, the dashboard. Yeah. Mine, once it shows that key, sometimes the car will not start. Mm. Sometimes I have to remove the key, wait a little bit, put it back until when it doesn't show that key, and then the car will now start. Mm. Why is yeah. it like that? Because I have tried to see if I can work on that thing. But each time I go to... <laughs> The um the person that is supposed to do the whole thing, the thing will not show at that time because it comes like time to time. It will not show until maybe I leave that place. Then one day I'm just trying the thing will now show again and then will now mess me up. Sometimes yeah. I'll have to even go remove the battery head, put it back, you know, like troubleshooting the car, then the thing will now see. See, all this is you're saying it's most likely your ECU is the cost. Oh, uh, yeah, I would say um, Nigeria Assembly Force is, uh, they are notorious for that thing. But it doesn't mean every user must experience it, but most users have done that. Um, mm -hmm. The way I see it is the, their ECU is uh, kind of fragile, the engine ECU, compared to the foreign uh, Assembly Forces with the same engine. So, um, but a lot of things can do that. Let's also, it doesn't matter. Let's also just, it's not just for Nigerian assembly. Let's say like every D9, 406. Things that can cause it is your COM2000. Your COM2000 can do that. Then the key itself, the transponder inside. Let's assume you, uh, the transponder has failed before. You now purchase uh, the new one, some of these new transponder in the market, cheap. Anyway, I think between two to five thousand can get to work. So those ones, uh, they don't behave like those original protocol. You know, so they sometimes they start acting intermittently. Sometimes it will show you it does it will cut off the communication to the BSI. Sometimes it will work. You know, so the transponder can do that. But you that original one, they are do that. Then um. Okay, no wonder. You are right because the key I'm using. 